It's time, brother, to saddle up and ride out into the the nuclear radiated wasteland that is Wales. <laughs> Hello all of you little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you, yes, you the person in the Hawaiian shirt covered in hot dogs and french fries. How could a snack get even tastier? My god, you're looking good. Yes, you get to dish out a list for me to then eat and excrete out into video form. Did a bit of the robot there for you there. And this week we have Bryson Gounet, or Gounet, I, I don't know how to pronounce your second name, but thank you for suggesting your idea of 10 video game achievements that people just didn't get. And I had to tweak it slightly, I'm afraid, my friend, because unfortunately your original wording was that nobody had, and how would I find a list of achievements that nobody had without alerting people to the fact that those achievements existed and then they would go and get those achievements, thereby nullifying the list? I couldn't do it. I failed you already. So I changed it to 10 incredibly easy video game achievements that players didn't get. Because there's nothing worse than that. We can all look at achievement lists and just say we're never going to get that. I mean, Gears of War Seriously 3.0 can f***ing get in the bin, for example. But there are some achievements that are so easy that you think to yourself, Why? 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 Have you not got that achievement? So here's 10 of them. <laughs> Let's get on with the list, shall we? Oh, actually, before we do... You know the drill by now. Say hello to me here in the live chat. Put your suggestions for next week's episode down in the comment section below. And a little side note. Love you, bud. Hope you're doing all right. Anyway, let's get on. Number 10. Happy birthday. Heavy rain. Oh my lord. We're talking about heavy rain and not focusing on the Jason moment. Gasp. Jason! Yes, instead, we're actually playing this admittedly pretty groundbreaking title for the fact that there is an achievement um, that is so easy it's surprising that people haven't got it. Now, in short, this is basically a film of a game because you basically have a minor role that just allows you to dictate the paths you explore and the overall ending that you will receive. And as you go through each chapter, you'll be rewarded with a trophy that marks your progress. And yet, only 40% of PS3 players have actually made it through the first chapter, which, lest we not forget, is only about 15 minutes long. Now I know that the game hasn't aged all that well in the graphics department and your kids definitely look like you're basically father to 50 year olds, they got a severe case of the Benjamin Buttons about them if you know what I'm saying. And I was also a bit disappointed that when you're playing with your kids in the garden and he's doing the whole sort of like flying on your dad's shoulders thing that you didn't actually take off. I mean it is a video game after all, give us f***ing something. But still, 15 minutes of your life to complete this first chapter. You couldn't even wish this kid happy birthday. God, imagine walking out of a film 15 minutes in. I mean, that's barely enough time to have spilled your popcorn on the floor and gotten brain freeze from your eyes slushy. Come on, guys. Number nine, you chose purely Saints Row 4. So when you think of Saints Row, you likely are going to be thinking of the action-packed moments of screeching through the streets and stolen vehicles or as most of us probably did, beating people to death with dildo bats, you probably don't think of moral dilemmas. The game is just a power fantasy that lets you do what you want and screw anybody that gets in your way, and it's just harmless fun, right? Well, what if all of this punching down on your fellow man has actually warped your perception so much that you end up refusing to accept a Hollywood heroic death because you're too bloody selfish? Well, that certainly appears to be the case in Saints Row 4, as so few people have unlocked an achievement given for simply choosing to sacrifice yourself near the end of the game. Here you're offered two portals. The red portal will kill you but will save the human race, and the blue portal will save Matt, but cause more suffering. And you know what? It is shocking to see that so many people chose the blue portal first. Now, there are a few issues with this. Number one, I mean, come on, just be a hero for God's sake. Do something for the betterment of humankind. Two, I mean, even if you did kill yourself, people love to see death animation, so why wouldn't you want to check it out? And three, Matt sucks and I fucking hate him. And adding spice to the crack, going through the red door would actually just reset set the scene and net you the trophy, so it was literally a case of players passing up on a free achievement. Number 8. Lord of Ironwrath Game of Thrones 
So Telltale games, while being rich, narrative-driven and character-focused stories, do unfortunately suffer from dwindling player bases. It's kind of to be expected, seeing as a lot of their IPs are based on TV shows which actually suffer the same fate. However, it's especially weird when you look at the case of Telltale's Game of Thrones series, which by all means should have been the most well-played due to the incredible popularity of its TV equivalent, but instead we're left with a really weird situation in which only 48% of people actually finish the game. Game. So, okay, you think maybe it's just because there were too many chapters in the title, right? Well, The Walking Dead Telltale game had a 72% completion rate, and that was only one episode shorter. And what is even more mad is the fact that only 85% of the player base completed the first episode meaning that the rest of the 15% were probably made up of Sean Bean clones who died before the season even got started. Is that even spoilers by this point? Spoilers. Dumbledore dies. Number 7. Always read the instructions. Lego Movie The Video Game now, it's an unfortunate fact of life that we humans, for some reason, just don't like following instructions. I mean, you can have them there printed out on nice paper and you just go, read it, read it, you read it, read it, and we just say no. I mean, in a strange fit of beta male ego, I once threw away the instructions midway through building an IKEA wardrobe. Clothes are still on the floor. Why did it have wheels? Since that point, I have gone on to rekindle my love for LEGO with the help of Phil Chambers from the Wrestling Channel. Seriously, he has got tons of the stuff, and of course Warhammer, which is basically LEGO for adults who secretly want to kill everyone. And through this, you learn to respect the value of having good instructions and following them to the letter, which is one of the many reasons that I also love the LEGO video games. However, it took me by surprise when the trophy Always Read the Instructions has only been unlocked by about 50% of the player base. And remember, these weren't options. These were the instructional builds that cap out around about chapter 11, so it means that you would have just gone through the game and you would have done this automatically. And all you had to do was walk up to the piles of bricks that were just going blop, 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 and press a button. I cannot think of an easier achievement to net. But yeah, only 50% of the player base got this. It's kind of sad, really. <laughs> Everything is an awesome. Number 6. Off the Boat, GTA 4. I. I. Ooh, mm, God. I, I genuinely am baffled by this next one, because GTA 4 as a game, oh, I mean there's only one word to describe it and that word is NOISH. However, it turns out that only 75% of GTA 4 players completed the first mission. Not NOISH. But, hmm, what, what? The mission is literally five minutes long, and this game is a masterpiece. How the hell did they not complete the first mission? This is like getting ready to have sex and saying I'm done when you get down to just your pants and socks, which is also known as the British nude. I know Roman is an annoying little tumour, but at the same time, to not see it through the first mission of one of the most acclaimed GTA games? Well, it's beyond me. Number five, <gasps> Fishing Master. If you've ever wanted to feel special while netting a video game achievement, maybe it's time for you to pick up a copy of Fishing Master. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know it doesn't sound that great, but bear with me for a second here, because I know that while spending time in doing imaginary fishing might not be for everyone, you can net this achievement by doing something pretty crazy. And by pretty crazy, I mean down in 12 bottles of soda. <laughs> yes, that's right. The best part about this achievement is the fact that it's got nothing to do with fishing itself, and so few people actually have this. And this is because the or hick achievement is attained by you downing 20 bottles of soda. That is it. That is not hard to get right. But what makes this even more surprising is that only 16% of people seem to have nabbed this bronze rank trophy. So why not grab yourself a copy of this, crack open a brew in real life and down some in the virtual one, and laugh at all of those people who thought that they could actually beat this game by doing the fishing. The fools! Number 4. First Banook Figure Found Horizon Zero Dawn. You know what, let's just cut to the chase here. I love this game. I love this game. So you know what I'm going to do. I'm doing the musical number today based on Horizon Zero Dawn. So, Osley, are you ready? Yeah, great. Another bloody song on Tuesday afternoon. I'm so excited. James, ba da, ba da, ba da, ba ba. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. James is kind of sick this afternoon, so. We're just gonna have to do it without him. This is what it's gonna look like anyway, but if you want to remix this, then go ahead and send it over to Jules on Twitter, and it'll mark it out of 10. Yes, it was actually quite pertinent, me doing that, because we are gonna do 
jazz today, James. Yes, jazz, obviously. Jazz, jazz, jazz. Yes, we're going to do some jazz today. It's going to be great. <laughs> and a one, and a two, and a one, two, three. I probably should have actually remembered my lyrics before I started doing that. And a one, and a two, and a one, two, three, four. I love this game, so I wrote it a song. I keep it up all night long, just butter my balls, butter my balls. I'm just buttering my balls, buttering my balls. And hey, Lois, saying, hey, boy, what you doing there? I'm just buttering my balls. I'm just buttering my balls, buttering my balls. Mm -mm. Buttering my balls, buttering my balls. What are my balls? Yeah, I quite like this game. It is one of the few titles that I just absolutely adored going through and exploring, finding all of the collectibles and just stalking prey, and just it just consumed hours upon hours of my life. And yet, it seems that exploring and collectible hunting only appeals to roughly about 50% of the audience who played Horizon Zero Dawn, as only half of the community has the trophy awarded for finding one of the six Banuk figures in the game. Now true, they are hidden, but they're in locations that are just begging to be explored, so come on, saddle up, once more, give this game some love. I've hit my hand on the table leg. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. Number three, back in the fight, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. <sighs> right, so remember when Activision came out and said, people just aren't playing the single player campaigns anymore, so we're going to be cutting them from future releases. And the audience were just kind of like, you can't single play? How dare you? And then Activision just immediately pulled up a little roster just saying like, look, we have evidence of this, you absolute idiots. And we still got mad at them. I mean, I got mad at them. But then again, I didn't know that so few people actually got the achievement in Modern Warfare 3 that you literally get for just starting the campaign. This isn't just a hyperbole right now. This isn't just being like starting the campaign and getting to the last level and just being like, oh, starting the campaign. Oh. Literally just pressing start to get into the campaign gets you an achievement. This achievement, which is called Back in the Fight, has only been netted by 78% of players. That clearly translates to hundreds, if not thousands of people. I mean, I know that this game is all about the multiplayer, but not even starting the single player is just just bizarre to me. Number two, Gatekeeper, Skyrim. Of all of the games out there, one of the best known because of the fact that it's on bloody every single device out there has to be Skyrim, right? I mean, everyone's played at least a little bit of it, which makes it even more surprising when there are achievements that pop up that you just go, how do people not have this? I know that it's a huge game, and I'm not saying that you needed to have explored everything to have gotten all this, but just going to the College of Winterhold and becoming part of the Majors Guild, so few people have this achievement. And it, there's not like a quest tied to it that is amazingly over the top. It's not like saying, go kill this dragon and steal its socks or something like that, or go over to this troll here and play like pachinko with him for 10 hours. It's nothing like that. You just got to go up to them and say, I can do magic. And they go, can you? This is the Hogwarts of Skyrim, you know? And you go, yeah, yeah I can do magic, all right. I got the, the dragon side, I got the fire hands. I, got, I, I can do other stuff. I pull a, pull a coin out your ass. Hmm, that sounds good. Even if you couldn't do that, I'd let you in for 30 gold. 30 gold, is that it? To join one of the most exclusive majors guilds in the entire area. 30 gold. The price of a sweet roll in London. Mm-hmm. Oh, sh 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 on my dick. <laughs> yeah, that's all it takes to join the Winterhold College of Mages. It's not hard. Just get to the top right of the map with 30 gold in your pocket. Come on, saddle up. Come on. Off you go. Pop on. Come on. Off we go. Go. Get out of here. And number one, Ata Gunner 8. Quiplash. Now, depending on what your life is like, this achievement in Quiplash called Ada's Got 8, which I absolutely love by the way, is either going to be incredibly simple or it's going to be incredibly hard because it requires you to have seven friends. That's it. You just got to play a full game of Quiplash, full of a, 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 a full party. That's it. That's all you got to do. Just seven friends. Just that's that's, that's all you got to do. I I, I I wish there was more to say about this, but that's it, seven friends. I know that some people in this current situation, that might be quite difficult trying to connect with people, but Quiplash is online now. Seven friends, that's all you gotta find. So what I was gonna do, because I didn't wanna harsh on people who might be socially excluded from stuff like that, is I actually came up with an idea to help people get this achievement. So I do uh, Live and Let's Dice, it's my personal gaming channel outside of what culture. I know the shackles come off and the beast is unleashed. So I was thinking to myself, what I might do is do a live stream where we help people get this achievement 
are going through and just going full parties, get to play with you guys as well, get to see some hopefully not atrocious things that you'll <laughs> put on there because obviously you play to your audience and the YouTube comment section is a interesting place. So we'll do this to spread some love, help people get this thing. Plus Quiplash is just a lot of fun. I basically wrote this entry here, just all around that, just to plug my own personal stuff. You might say it's cheap, but you clearly haven't been watching my stuff for the last four years then. <laughs> Anyway, that's the end of the list. Hope that you enjoy that. And if you do want to become part of this Live and Let's Dice Quiplash phenomenon, then just go to the Discord, which should be in the link below or popping up on the screen, or just type in Live and Let's Dice and you'll find my mug and Lawson's mug and Mikey's mug there as well. So yeah, see you over there, pal. Friend. Friend pal. Pen pal. There we go, enough rambling. That has been another episode of Choose Your Own Adventure, and I hope that you enjoyed that, my friends. And please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, as well as your suggestions for next week's episode. Thank you for joining me in the live chat. This guy here is especially very cool. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. We detailed today about video game achievements that were easy, that you kind of missed. And you know what, we can apply that to our own personal lives as well, because there are very simple things that we can do in the day-to-day -to, -day to make sure that we are doing well, both mentally and physically. And it starts with just checking in with yourself. It starts with asking yourself simple questions like, am I okay? Can I deal with this? Do I need help? They might seem like very obvious things, that you, but you feel that, uh, but you actually don't consider them a lot in the day-to-day. So what I'm hoping today is that you will ask yourself those questions, recognize if you do need help, if you do need support, because it is out there in the, fa in the form of friends, family, professionals in the support industry, because these people care about you and want you to do well. I will always bang on about it because it is bloody important. Now go out there and absolutely smash it, you big ledge. I've been Jules. You've been awesome. Never forget that. You can follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. I'll speak to you soon. Peace out. Peace out. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye. 